My name is Shabuddin Rahim Tula. I'm distinguished professor at the University of Southern California. I'm speaking to you today from Boston, and this is at the 21st Annual Scientific Sessions of the International Academy of Cardiology. My topic is valve prosthesis patient mismatch. I first described valve prosthesis patient mismatch in 1978. And subsequent to that, there were a lot of papers, but I, the editor of JAG asked me to upgrade it 35 years later, so I upgraded it in 2013. And what I'm going to discuss with you very quickly is what is largely the highlights on that 2013 paper. First and foremost, when one talks about mismatch, one is saying that the prosthetic heart valve inserted into the patient is smaller than the patient's natural prosthetic heart valve. It, uh, most of the data is on the aortic valve, and so the question is, uh, what is important? The important thing from a practical and clinical point of view is to have a severe mismatch. Severe mismatch is defined as an effective orifice area index of less than or equal to 0.65 centimeter square per meter square. One of the things one has to keep in mind is people look at the data on the prosthesis when the patient is first inserted into the patient or at a few weeks later. The problem with that is that all prosthetic heart valves of the same size from the same manufacturer are not actually the same size. A manufacturer cannot make a 25 millimeter such that every valve 21 millimeter is precisely 21 millimeter. The second thing to keep in mind <coughs> is what I said that there are changes that occur in the valve. Most of them initially occur during the first six months. So the important time to measure this is usually done by echo Doppler and is at, some people do it initially and that's okay, but the best time is at about six to 12 months. Now, one of the problems that has arisen is that people don't, they don't actually measure it, they extrapolate it. They extrapolate it from a whole lot of tables, published material, and they often take it from a manufacturer. The table that is handed out by the manufacturer is biased in favor of that particular manufacturer. So one has to really measure it. What a lot of people are doing to make it simple over the years is they take a valve size and say, this is what it will be. So that's called expected effective orifice area, and that is grossly misleading, grossly misleading. Now, what one wants to look at is, is the outcome with when it is severe. When it is severe, the outcome is that the patient's characteristics and performance is not ideal. In fact, it's less than good. In other words, their exercise capacity may be reduced, LVH may not regress to the same degree. And so one always wants to go by the measured effective orifice area. And when you actually measure it and not extrapolate it, again, I want to emphasize that very importantly. Uh, it has to be kept in mind that the effective orifice area index is predictor of functional outcome and of cardiac status, but it has not been shown to be uh, or the, its effect on survival is highly controversial at the present time. And it has not been shown to be correct, uh, not been shown to be proven, mainly because people have to use different criteria, different valves, different effective orifice area size. So what is the simple bottom line for the physicians and the cardiologists? First and foremost, you must measure the actual valve area. Uh, so it's called effective orifice area. You have to correct it for body size, meter squared, and the best time to measure it is about six months, so it's six to 12 months, and after that you have to follow the patient also and measure it with an annual echo to see how it's going. So a lot of the data, in fact most of the data is what happens over the first few years. Now newer data is beginning to come out that it may not be quite as rosy in the long term as we thought it was and that is still a bit controversial at the present time. So let me then summarize one, you got to measure the effective orifice area. 
severe is EOAI less than 0.6 centimeter square meter square. You measure it by echo Doppler. The best time to measure it is at 6 to 12 months and then at annual follow-up. <laughs>